Time. The clock is ticking in the showdown between Chicago Public Schools and the Chicago Teachers Union over a return to in-person learning. Yeah, teachers are supposed to be back in the classrooms tomorrow as negotiations continue. WJN's Sean Lewis is here now with the very latest on that battle. Sean. Yeah, good afternoon. They really need to figure this out. That's because this next phase for reopening involves a lot more students than the pre-K did. This is K through 8. 191,000 students in those grades in CPS. Just 70 1,000 of them have now opted to return to class. The rest, more than 63%, will remain remote. CPS wanted teachers back yesterday to prepare for this. They said no. The teachers' union maintains it's not safe for them to go back inside. They want to stay remote until they get a vaccine. This morning in the snow between CTU. There is no clear plan for us and CPS. As a school system, we cannot do this work alone. It is an unsteady road for parents and students trying to figure it all out. It's all about the kids. Myra Nesbaum feels caught in the middle this morning, bringing her daughter to Columbus Elementary for class, something they've done for two weeks since pre-K and cluster programs went back to the option of in-person learning. In an email last night from CPS, they said pre-K would be open. So we showed up ready to go to school uh, and nobody was there uh, to greet us. Well, there was there were janit the janitorial staff was there in full force and they were really apologetic to tell us that there were no teachers in the building. Nobody had come in today. It is perhaps a nod to solidarity among CPS teachers, but it is just the latest hitch in the ongoing dispute between CPS and CTU during the pandemic. Last month, the CPS plan brought K through eighth graders back on February 1st. That is next Monday. But this past Sunday, CTU members voted to defy that. This city has failed people when it comes to this coronavirus over and over again. This morning, repeating their concerns, including safe environment, and now about reopening schools when teachers and staff get vaccinated. We're not asking to make a plan that's impossible. We're asking to be prioritized for our health and safety for our communities. Last week, CPS put out a timeline for vaccinations, saying that will likely happen in mid-February. I truly believe that the plan that we have in place prioritizes the health and safety of our students and our staff. We would not make a decision to return to in-person instruction if we didn't think we could do so safely. For parents, it's a struggle. Oh, I give it an F. <laughs> I, I am so frustrated. Advocating for their kids and trying to support those who teach them. I just hope they can get it sorted out. Um, they can come to an agreement. This afternoon, Myra got another email from her daughter's school saying that they're, quote, experiencing an unexpected teacher and teacher assistant absence. They're trying to get substitutes to come on in. Back to the big picture now. CTU says it's not going to strike because teachers can continue to teach from home. That's not part of the CPS deal there and could, could block teachers from getting into their virtual classrooms to work remotely if they stay home without approval. They've already done that for some pre-case uh, teachers who decided to stay at home. Okay, Sean Lewis, thank you for breaking it down for us. We you appreciate bet. it. Up next here on the WGN Evening News at 4.